On this episode, we continue to work on the pool table, and we do that by having some fun with veneer and tapers. Very fun stuff. frame pieces all laminated up and ready to go and I got my bandsaw all set up for resawing operations and I'm in the process of making myself some veneer. Make my own veneer. How cool is that? I gotta be honest, when I first thought about doing this, I was a little leery about making veneer out of pine, but this is coming out beautiful. Look at that. Two beautiful bookmarked, book matched pieces. Beautiful. Well, got my veneer all ready to go. And just so you know, before I ran before I ran through the bandsaw, I jointed the edge of my board so I knew I was gonna have a nice so that when it came time to jointing these two, I was gonna have a nice tight seam and it came out really nice. I'm very happy. In fact, this whole veneering process is turning out way better than I ever expected it to, and it's looking really good. Now, I had a couple options here when I was going to do this, and my original thought was to use contact cement, but I kind of thought that using contact cement would kind of be hard to get, make, get this seam really, really tight. So instead, I decided to just use wood glue. And then what we can do is we can put it in a vacuum bag, suck it, oh wait, I don't have a vacuum bag. Well, then the next best thing to do is I will go to my wall of Bessie clamps. Oh, wait, I don't have a wall of Bessie clamps. But what I do have is I do happen to have some leftover pavers from a landscaping project from a few years ago. And I'm going to use those as weight, and it should work just fine. So I've already cleaned up my pieces, and we're ready to glue. Now when I first laminated these two pieces of plywood together, I glued them together. I really wasn't too concerned about how careful and neat I was with my glue, my even distribution of glue. But because this is veneer and it's a thin piece of lumber, I want to make sure I get a good, good even layer of glue. So I'll take my time here and do this right. Take a quick peek at my seams, make sure nothing shifted. Looking good there. I'm looking good there. All right, we'll let this set up for about an hour, then we'll move on to the next one. Now, while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on my veneer, I thought I'd spend some time cleaning up the legs. I'm just using a standard hand plane and just tightening up and cleaning up my joints. I tell you, there's nothing like working with the hand plane that really makes you feel good about your work. Now, originally, 
I was just going to leave this lamination visible. Um, it was going to be underneath the table and it would be, hardly be able to tell. But because I'm so happy with how the laminations came out for the frame pieces, I decided that I will go ahead and put a layer of pine over this as well. And it should, should come out very, very well. So I've got my legs all cleaned up. Joints look really, really clean and even. So now what we need to do, recall the plan, the inside of the leg has a taper. It's going to be here. Then also here. So I'm going to start laying those out now. Knock that off, and we're going to knock this off. And I'm going to do that on the table saw. All right, I got my legs ready to go into the table saw. Now, I can only get about three inches of height out of my table saw blade, and these legs are eight inches wide. So I'm going to have to do them in two passes, and I'm going to end up with the section in the middle that's not cut. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll get a little creative. I'll get out the sawzall and rip it out that way. It's a little a little cumbersome, but it'll get the job done. We'll just have a little extra work with the sander later. All right, so I'm going to make sure the taper is opposite my outside. So I'm going to be removing this section, opposite my outside, and I'm going to be removing this section. Looks like I forgot to remove a screw. Good thing I was going slow, otherwise that could have been really dangerous. Three more just like that. All right, now I need to move my fence over to this side of the table, but as you can see, I got a problem. My tapering jig only works on the right side of the blade. So what I did is I just took a scrap piece of plywood, ran it through, and got the same taper that my tapering jig is set up to, attached a stop block to it. Now I've got my tapering jig. I want to get my fence. Now I don't have a gauge on this side of my table, so I'm going to have to measure this manually. On the other side of the table, we were at 13 and 15 sixteenths. So I want to get that measurement as precise as I can. That looks really good. It is really easy to get confused when doing tapers, so I just make sure I take my time, and usually things work out pretty good. That right, looks really good. Let's run them through. Coming together, three more. I've gotten as far as I can go on the table saw with my taper. I'll finish the cut with the reciprocating saw. I have to use a long thin blade, and long thin blades have a tendency to wander. And I want to make sure that it doesn't wander into my good stock, so I'm going to be certain to take my time.
that blade wandered pretty good. I'm going to have quite a bit of material here to, to get rid of. I'll do that with the hand plane. But first, got one more taper to do on this piece. That side came out way better. A lot less material to remove. That was really easy. That is looking beautiful. All right, three more just like that. I've got my frame roll pieces all ready to go. I got them through the planer and they really came out nice. I'm very happy with the whole veneer process. It, it has turned out beautifully. But anyway, I have ripped some uh, edge banding on the table saw and I'm going to attack, I'm going to glue it on here and I'm going to attach it with brads. And I'm going to leave the brads out proud and I'll probably, probably pull them out later. going to spend some time sanding here, getting these all flushed and tight. And when that's all, when I'm done with that, I'm going to take them over to the table saw and run them through once and make sure they are at my exact dimension of eight inches wide. Then we get to have fun with dados. Woohoo!